Hello and welcome to the Title III HSI STEM Grants Technology Training Video Series. In this session, we're going to be talking about the Sharp Aquasport. This mobile cart is designed to be a standalone, independent mobile classroom that is designed to enhance your delivery of your curriculum to your students. In this particular seg segment, we'll be talking about the features of the board and get you thinking about what you could do with this particular device in your classroom. So just the intro, first of all, this is the board itself, as you can see. It's a 70 inch display. It's an LCD, fully black backlit, so it minimizes glare and allows you to use this in your classroom, essentially as a monitor, as a projector, or as any other type of display device. So now we're looking at the back of the Aquas board. And we just wanted to do a quick orientation with you on exactly what was on the back of the board and a couple of minor things that you might be able to do if the board isn't functioning the way that you want. First of all, <clears throat> we mentioned an onboard PC. This device here is the onboard PC. You'll notice immediately once you plug this, once you plug the board into the wall, you'll hear the fan on the computer, so you'll know that it started up. If you don't hear that noise, there's a small button in the bottom corner here that you can press that turns the power on to the onboard PC. This device must be on if you plan on using the device in the computer mode or PC mode. The second major thing that you'll notice is this little box right here. This is what's called an HDMI switch. Everything that is ran on this device is ran through HDMI or high definition cables. We have the onboard PC is ran through one, and then also our Apple TV and our Blu-ray player. So in order to move through those different components, we had to set it up with this switch. We have five inputs on this switch. We're using three of them, so we have left two of them available if there's any additional HDMI components that you would like to see added to the board, or if there's something that you bring into the classroom that requires an HDMI input. <coughs> The top of this is illuminated in blue for whichever input is activated. So the PC is input 1, the Apple TV is input 2, and the Blu-ray player is input 3. That's one of the common troubleshooting issues if you go to switch devices using the activities on the universal remote. <clears throat> if it's not switching over, you can move the remote around to the side or the rear of the board and point it at this device in order to get that change to occur. <clears throat> Here you'll notice is a wireless network adapter. We have set these up to be Wi-Fi enabled so that way they do not have to be connected to the network. We've actually uh, designed these devices so that they could be used outside. Anywhere that you, as long as you can get power to this device then you would be able to use it from anywhere that you have Wi-Fi capability. <clears throat> if you would like to connect it to a network, we have included a 25-foot Cat5 cable. Um, there will be one on the back of each board. To connect this, there is a Cat5 port. It's, you will notice it because it's the only open port on the back of the, of the onboard computer. And then you can plug the other end of this directly into an available Ethernet port in the classroom or into the port that's available on the 21st century classroom. <clears throat> You'll also see the webcam. And then at the bottom of the board, this is where you'll find the Apple TV, which is this small black box that's sitting on top of this larger box, which is your Samsung Blu-ray player. All of that connects into an eight port power supply. That power supply <clears throat> controls everything that's in the board, so the board and all of the components that we've mentioned. And then we've left three ports available, again, for anything that you may need in the classroom. If it requires power, you can plug it into here. All of this is connected to a single cable, and as long as you have this board within 15 feet of a cable, or within 15 feet of an extension cord, then you can get power to the board and it'll be able to function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the board on. If the board is not already on, whenever you plug the device in, you'll notice over here in the bottom right hand corner that the, the light is red. We want this light to be green. There's a single power button. 
press the button, the light will turn green. It takes just a moment for the device to power up. This is mainly because of the size of the display and because it's backlit, so it has to warm up very much like a large TV at home. Or... Now that it's up, what you'll notice is you have a full Windows 7 operating system, identical to what you would have on your laptop or desktop computer in your office or at home. You'll notice that it comes preloaded <coughs> with several different softwares. We have Camtasia Relay and Camtasia Studio for anyone that'd be interested in doing lecture capture using the device while you have it in the classroom. We have Doceri Desktop for anyone that's using that. We have the Sharp Pen software and the Pen Software Overlay mode, both of which we will talk about briefly in just a moment. And then we have Snagit for anyone that is using that. And then we've also preloaded it with Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome browsers, as well as uh, Dropbox uh, cloud storage system. <clears throat> so we're going to come in here real quick. We're just going to open up the Sharp Pen software. The board is completely touch. So anywhere that you touch on the board, you'll notice that the cursor will follow your finger. You can use either your finger to activate an icon by double clicking, or you can use the supplied pen. We click on that. And when the pen software opens, the first thing that you'll notice is that it looks very much like a whiteboard. For any of you that are using a whiteboard in your class to draw or to annotate, you can select different colors from this side. So if we select, say, the red pen, we can then write directly on the board. We can simply change colors, and we can work through. When you are finished with using the pen software, you can export anything that you've done as a PDF, and then you can place it later at your convenience on your Blackboard course. When you're finished with it, come over here to the open door. It'll ask you if you want to save. We're just going to exit without saving on this. We don't need our things. And now it's all finished. The second thing that we have in here is what's called the pen software overlay mode. We're going to open that up, and what you'll see is that you still get your toolbar, but you don't get the whiteboard anymore. What this allows you to do is open up any pictures or open up a website, for example. So if we open up a website here, and then we click on our overlay mode. Now we can annotate within any image or any picture that we have that we want. And again, you can save these annotations over these pictures and you can export these as a PDF. You can also do this within the Microsoft Office Suite. So if you're accustomed to annotating PowerPoints, or maybe annotating Word documents or something like that. You can also do that using the overlay look mode. To exit out again, click the open door. It's going to ask us if we want to save. We're not going to save this one. We're going to get rid of it. And then we also have our web page. We'll close that. And we're back to this. <clears throat> so again, we're operating within a Windows 7 operating system. But this is just one thing that the board can do. Another thing that, that we can do is we could stream video if you wanted to stream your lecture. We can actually come in here. We have outfitted this with an HD webcam. The Logitech 920 HD webcam allows us to stream video. So we're just going to come in here into our into our software and our start menu. That's going to bring us up. We can take pictures. We can record video simply by turning on Quick Capture. So we're going to press that, and then we're going to wait for it to come up. And now we can actually see our classroom. One thing that you'll notice with the webcam, you'll know that it's activated whenever we have the blue lights that illuminate on either side. So we'll exit out of that. <coughs> Other things that we can do with this device, we, in addition to simply having an onboard computer, which this device has, and we'll orient you to the rest of the board uh, in just a few moments, but in addition to that, we've also outfitted it with a four-port USB hub, so if you use a flash drive or anything like that, you'll find that located in the tray. We've outfitted each one with a Bluetooth wireless keyboard, 
So you can use those. You'll especially need this whenever you're logging into the computer or if you want to do any type of typing or anything like that that's involved with the computer. You'll find that in the tray. The eraser. To use the eraser anytime you're annotating, it's not like the smart boards where you have to select an eraser. Simply pick it up and you can erase directly onto the board. <clears throat> the last thing that you'll notice within the tray is we've had, we have a five component universal remote control. We use this because in addition to the board being a large computer screen, we've also outfitted this with an Apple TV and with a Samsung Blu-ray player. That allows you to stream movies, stream videos from Apple TV. It allows you to mirror a device, such as an iPhone or an iPad, directly to the device. And then the Samsung Blu-ray player allows you to play any DVD-based movie directly onto it, just as you would a large television. The way that we've set up the universal remote is we've set it up by activity. We've tried to minimize as much as possible. The activities are located across the top of the remote control. So right now, we're using the PC. So one of the activities that we have that is set up is use the PC. So if when you, when you bring the board up, when you power it on, the default setting is for the PC because we figured this would be the one that would be most used by faculty. If we want to use the Apple TV, we have, a, we have an activity on here that says Watch TV. So if we select Watch TV and then we point the device, then it will make the necessary changes in order to power on the Apple TV. If there's any issue, we have an assistant on here that will help us. So if we press the Help button, the first thing it will do is it will ask us if that fixed the problem. We can say yes or no. So if we're not getting what we want, we would say no. Is the monitor on? We check for the green light. The monitor is on, so we say yes. Is the Apple TV on? It has a small button on the front, and there's our... We say yes. We say okay. Say yes, yes. So now we have our Apple TV. In a separate training video, we will talk a little bit more about the details of Apple TV and how to use that, but for now we're just wanting to introduce you to the board itself. So this is our Apple TV and the different components, and we've selected that by simply saying Watch TV on the remote control. So one of the nice features that we have with the Apple TV, in addition to being able to stream music or stream videos from YouTube or you know, perhaps from one of the, the designated devices from the iTunes library, is the ability to mirror an iPad or an iPhone to this device and being able to use those within the classroom in conjunction with the Office Board. In order to do the mirroring capability, <clears throat> you take your iPad or your iPhone. If you're unfamiliar with using the, the mirroring capability, simply double click the home icon, swipe to the right, and you'll see an icon that looks very much like a monitor with an arrow pointing to it. If we click that, you'll then get a list that will ask you what you want to mirror or airplay, as the app is called, your, your device to. So in this case, we want to mirror it to Apple TV. So we're going to select the Apple TV. We're going to turn our mirroring on. And when we do this, now we have effectively whatever is displayed on our iPad is now going to be displayed on the board. If you want to do any type of annotations or anything like that, you can do them from the iPad and you can show them here on whatever you're using. So just to clarify, here is your taskbar that we've double clicked our home icon to reach. We've swapped to the right and then this is our icon for mirroring. We've selected Apple TV and we've turned the mirroring on. To get rid of that, simply turn the mirroring off and it'll go back to its original display. If we would like to use the Blu-ray player, then we select the activity Watch a Movie. So again, we press the button, keep the remote pointed at the board, and allow it to go through its necessary changes. It actually has to change over a few different things. That's all designed to kind of simplify the process for, for you as a faculty member. This is the default menu that you would get for your Blu-ray. At this point then, the Blu-ray player 
primarily just becomes a movie playing device. So if you use any type of DVDs in your class, then you can play them directly through the Blu-ray player. <clears throat> so this concludes the first part of our orientation on the Sharp Aquas board. We hope that you'll get something out of, these, out of this video. We hope that you will take an opportunity to come by and see these boards firsthand, maybe take it and play with it for a little bit to orient yourself to it. Thank you.